with Mitch, Jay, and Ron. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I, I don't even know. It feels weird doing the intro with Mitch next to me. It's like I don't even feel like I should be doing Big it. Big Dags. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Big Dags. Big Dags. Dot com. Um, <laughs> got a decent card today. <laughs> got some uh, college hoops on the board. Jay and I were talking about how lovely this NBA card is today, and uh, a couple NHL on the board as well. You just saw game one of the MLB season in the books. Um, the Padres came out on top, what, 5-2? It was... Uh, Dodgers, was, right? Dodge, was Dodgers came out on top? I, I, I missed the game completely. I was telling the guys I was watching the back of my eyelids. The Padres Dodgers came out. man. I know it was yep. an eighth inning, eighth inning said, debacle. Yeah, it was a, it was a meltdown. Yeah, so. Typical Padres, game one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Who needs another 161 games? We're going to get into mid-season form right now. But, Typical uh, Padres. <laughs> Mitch, how's it going? Super duper, getting ready to head out to see you in Vegas. Going to hook up with Jay in Dallas and then head on out to Vegas. Uh, you know, Tomorrow, of course, the tournament starts. Be, uh, we'll all be around, so if anyone wants to hook up with the Pick Dogs crew, shoot us a message, any of us. Um, you can DM us on Twitter, hit us on the Facebook, or, of course, you got my email. And um, we'll go from there. But uh, we'll be around watching the games. And uh, I think we got about 20 people. So it should be a good time. Absolutely. Jay, how's it going? What's going on? What's going on? I wish I would have won last night, man. Um, the damn Nuggets, man. They were airing them out. And then all of a sudden just fell apart. Uh, they won the game, but failed to cover. That was my top play yesterday. So I'm looking to bounce back on that. But I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Finishing packing here in a second. I'll be heading out here in a little bit. Uh, two heading to the CU, Costi and Mitch should be a lot of fun today. Um, and for the week, so March Madness is here. Shout out Wagner yesterday. Um, they tried to give it up, but they tried to give it up. <laughs> uh, they, Mo and Franz they didn't. Showed up. Yeah, Mo and Franz they showed up <laughs> and got it done. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the madness, man. I'm glad to be talking with the guys this morning. Jay, you you got the message last night. You didn't respond to me, but I but I know exactly. They pissed me off too. Yeah, they pissed Trash me. Trash panda too. status has been reinstated. They the Dallas they pissed Mavericks me off. are on my do not bet list. <laughs> They've been covering though for me, so you yeah. know one bad. I can't put them on there, but they should have won and covered last night. Bad game from Luca. He hasn't had many of those. Um, we'll be fine. Damn magic keeping it up though. Holy. Sheesh. Ron, how's it going? Sheesh. It's going good, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I, I'm getting a little jealous over here. I think next year I'm going to have to meet you guys up in Vegas. Sounds like it's going to well, be a good time. We, we only gave you six months' notice, you know, <laughs> to let you know That's where we're going. I think uh, been, I, I looked at when I booked my plane ticket, man. It was a long time ago. Oh, I mean, I if Jay Briggs I'm... beat you to the, to the booking. And you're moving slow. <laughs> we know that much. Jay is the all-time of the uh, the delayed booker. Oh, man. <laughs> Took that's everything gonna, to get him to book. That's going to be the new measuring stick. Is when did Jay book? If Jay booked before you, yeah, you got to hurry up. Oh, yeah. Seriously, man. <laughs> Jay is like <laughs> the last man. I, I've seriously met Jay in the lobby of the hotel. Rebooking the room. <laughs> it's like we're at the hotel. He's booked. It's like, it's like you can't do that. It's, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> so I'll turn this to Jay. How does it feel to be the measuring stick here, Pick Dogs? Fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where gonna, Jay, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's what we're gonna start calling Jay the measuring stick. <laughs> Jay's like, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> Except for me, unless I get there at the last minute or book at the last minute. I can't wait, Ron. I can't wait. Ron, it ain't too late, man. You know, hop on that, hop on that, hop on that. Jay's plane, done man. it. All right, Jay's done. There. Jay's done it on shorter notice than this, man. <laughs> oh man! All right, what do you guys say we get into it? I mean, I know we, I know we, uh, we normally talk a little bit longer, but guys have to get on planes. Guys have to finish packing. Everybody always says, oh, get to the picks. Well, okay, let's 
We'll get to it. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, wait. Whoa. You can pull out you can pull out the stop picking on Brian. Stop stop fading the Clippers. I say let's get to the picks. And it's like, oh my god, there's an uproar. <laughs> All right, we'll get into it with uh college we're gonna start with college hoops today. Um decent card. Got some NCAA tournament, a couple playing games, a lot of NIT, a lot of CIT. Oh, before I get into it, how about uh how about Virginia showing us yesterday that uh, they, sh- they probably they shouldn't, shouldn't have been, been in the NCAA tournament? Oh my! <laughs> there are a couple teams. My Oklahoma the- boys would put up a much better fight. St. John's would have put up a much better fight. Indiana State. Uh, Indiana State would have put up a much better fight. USF. Who else? Yeah, man. Against Virginia? Virginia? No, against Colorado State. Virginia, in place of Virginia, they played well. They they left it all out on the court. They had fourteen <laughs> points in the first half. <laughs> I was watching <laughs> something that said they went literally about an hour without scoring. Yes, yeah, they went ten minutes and thirty six seconds of the second half without a basket. Trash. Typical Virginia basketball. I mean, but I think you got to give Colorado State some credit there on yeah. that, too. Oh, yeah. Because that's not the I first time we've seen them do They did that to Creighton, too. They did the exact same thing. They beat the, they beat, they beat Creighton by the same amount. And they did the exact same thing to them. Creighton couldn't score on them, either. Yeah, we've seen it multiple times this season. All right. First, we'll do we'll do groups groups of four. Got Grambling and Montana State in the lone NCAA tournament game with a slot. Uh, Seton Hall, St. Joe's, got Indiana State, SMU, and Bradley and Loyola. Uh, Mitch, what do you like here? I definitely like Montana State over Grambling. I think, um, you know, I, I think the Grambling 9-1 and one in their last 10 is a little bit overstated. I think Montana State, um, we saw what they are made of, coming from fifth place in the big sky, 14 and 17 in the regular season um, to make it into this game. And I, th- I think they have what it takes to, uh, to beat Grambling here. I don't like the Grambling offense. Um, just doesn't do it for me. The Montana defense certainly is sieve, but at least they guard the perimeter. Also, Montana, the better shooting team. And, of course, they can hit 36.7% from the arc. Um, I see this one being all Montana state. Jay, what do you like here? I'm going to go the other way, man. I'm on Grambling. Uh, I think this is a – I think Grambling has a legitimate chance to win it out, right? And I'm attacking the plus money here too, um, kind of like I did yesterday with Wagner. I just think that it's hard to say my – you know, I, I get what Mitch is saying, you know what I mean? But Grambling, I got to respect that 9-1. and one. Like, these boys are just playing really good basketball right now. And to – and getting plus money with them and a chance to punch their ticket, I think they got a legitimate chance to beat Montana. Montana, they, you know, they, they're playing well now. You know, some of the best basketball, best basketball we've seen them play, which is a good thing. It is a good thing, but we also know they're capable of laying an egg. You know, they're, they're a 50-50 team. That's just what that's what they have been all season. I, I think Grambling probably gets them today. I'm on the I'm on Grambling. There's, there's some badasses in the big sky, man. Big sky, don't... Weber boys over there, I know, I know. <laughs> they beat Weber. They beat the crap out of Weber. They did. Ron, what do you like here? Yeah, looking at St. Joe's plus the points against Seton Hall, I just think that they match up really well in this game. Seton Hall's been known to struggle against the three-point jumper this year. They give up a lot of their points from three-point jumpers. And St. Joe's, they take more threes than most teams, and – they make them at a pretty good rate. So I think their offense is in pretty good form. I think they're going to be in good shape in this game. And the defense for St. Joe's was actually pretty solid down the stretch. I mean, St. Joe's won a couple of games in that 8 10 tournament. They beat George Mason and Richmond, solid teams. They held them to 57 and 61 points in those games. And then even the loss in, to uh, VCU in that tournament, they held them 66 points. So the defense is good form. The offense is a good matchup. I think it's just way too many points. Uh, I'm going to go with Loyola Chicago. Uh, plus the points against Bradley. Uh, Bradley normally Lariola. a team. Yeah, Lariola. I'm gonna, you know, Bradley normally a team that has the last couple of years has been really good against the spread at home. Um, actually, have one of the best teams against the spread I think since 
2021. But um, well, these two teams know each other from, from Loyola, only dipping from the uh, the, uh, the the Missouri Valley only like t- two seasons ago. So these two teams know each other. It was last year, right? Last, last year. year was well, last year was their first year in the uh, I think in the in the A10. Um, but you know this Loyola Chicago team is no joke. I mean they're they they play tournament style basketball. I, I thought this team was going to make the NCAA tournament, and I think this is just a game that comes down to the last possession. I think this is going to be tight the entire way, and uh, I think it's a two three point game max. So give me Loyola Chicago and the points against the Bradley Braves. Move on. Is nine tenths of the law. Yeah. <laughs> and now we got majority CIT tournament action here. You got PFW Changs against uh, Bowling Green. We got Abilene yeah, yeah. and Tarleton. We got Alabama A and M, Austin P, and UNLV Princeton, the lone NIT game of the slot. Jay, what do you like here? I don't I don't see I don't currently see any lines for Tarleton, Abilene, Christian in, in that bowling green line. I don't see those. There's bowling, the line is going one and a half. Tarleton's yeah, Tarleton's a five and a half point favorite. Total is at one forty seven. And Bowling Green's laying a point and a half, one forty seven and a half. Yep. Tarleton, you said five? That's about where I thought it was. Five and a half. Five and a half. Everybody knows that's where I want to be in that basketball game. Um, and that's where exactly where I'm gonna be. <laughs> I'm on Tarleton in that one. I think they're the better team. Um these boys been balling all season. I know the last meeting was fairly close. Uh, it was a three-point win for Tarleton at Abilene. But uh, before that, we saw them beat up on Abilene. They beat them both times this season. Five and a half, I think it's, it's probably exactly where the number should be. But I think Tarleton probably wins about like six or seven. So, um, I'm – and uh, da, 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 small lean on PFW Changs. Ron, what do you like here? I want to go under in UNLV Princeton. Um, I, I think Princeton, you know, obviously they made it to the tournament last year. Disappointing for them to not make it this season, but um, I still think they're a really good team. I, I, you know, Brown was just playing such good basketball going into that one. And, uh, you know, Princeton caught him at the wrong time. But Princeton's still a really solid defensive team. I do think their offense, though, is a bit overrated. And I think UNLV can really play well defensively themselves in this game. They defend the perimeter really well. And I think, you know, UNLV really likes to slow the game down. Uh, both teams really do, honestly, offensively. The Princeton's 346 in average position, like offensively. UNLV 350 on the defensive side. So a slower-paced game with two solid defenses, I'm going to go with the under. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, UNLV in the points against Princeton in that game. I just think that, you know, UNLV was battle-tested. You know, they had a really solid season in what was, in my opinion, one of the better conferences in college basketball this season, the Mountain West. Uh, they finished the year fairly strong. I get it, Princeton, you know, high-octane offense, and we've, we've seen them have some of their best performances in Ivy League play, but, you know, the Ivy League wasn't all that great this season out of Yale and Cornell, and outside of Yale and Cornell, and didn't have the strongest uh, non-conference schedule either. Um, I think UNLV, say, you know, these teams are on the same level. If UNLV isn't the better team here, so give me UNLV and the points against Princeton. Mitch, what do you like here? I'm with you on UNLV against Princeton. I think Princeton of those Ivy teams <clears throat> was the worst of the bunch. I think Yale is probably not all that great either, to be honest with you. But I think that. Um, Princeton, I think we saw them have this big record, and you know they just never really clobbered anybody. Meanwhile, UNLV was way better on the road than they were at home. They went into the pit and beat the shit out of New Mexico, man, recently. And they've gone on the road in a lot of these games and have beaten all the good teams. It's typical bad coach um, scenario in UNLV. It's the prototypical bad coach scenario where they lose the games where it's a layup for them, and they win the games that nobody gives them a chance. And that, that they have a ton of talent. UNLV is not a tough place to recruit. I mean, <laughs> I know four people on this on this broadcast that would have no problem spending four years in Vegas if they let us. You know, <laughs> of course, we'd keep a lot of uh, a lot of the local things in business over there. But at the same time, man, it's uh, 
Yeah, I think, you know, V is, is a really, really good team. And I think that they're the type of team that if they would have made it into the into the main, you know, tournament, into the big one, they would have probably given some people some problems. I mean, they, they like the Colorado State team that we see we saw beat, um, you know, Virginia last night, they beat them, you know. They beat San Diego State. This is a team that's beat tournament teams. They beat New Mexico. They beat Colorado State. They beat San Diego State. They beat NCAA tournament teams. They're not going to have any problem with these guys. Um, I thought the Ivy did did a nice job last night with Cornell. I thought that was they were their the best chance of Ivy getting a postseason win, um, but they fell just short. But they're never outside the number. They're winning a good portion of the game. They, everything first came out. My first pick. That my first thing I said was Cornell. <laughs> that was my first. First circle. Yeah, I thought they were going to beat Ohio State. I really I thought they were, too. But... Some bullshit calls in that <laughs> one. <laughs> that was Freaking a little too strange with a chip on their shoulder yesterday, too. You had uh, Minnesota coming out and beating Butler outright. They, they How about that? Out. How about the foul call with, like, points <laughs> one seconds left to go? <laughs> Two free throw shots, their best free throw shooter. As money, you know, how about Butler them taking the bat? That was my only loss yesterday. They took the basket off the board for Butler. They called goaltending, and then they called no goaltending, and it gave Butler down by two with, um, you know, like 1.8 seconds left to go. I was getting one and a half with Butler. And that was my only loss. But um, yeah, they took the basket off the board. I was like, no. It's like everyone, just, you could tell, like, one of those games, you're at the sports book when it happened, half the place is screaming, you know, the other half is all pissed. <laughs> all right, we move to our last set of games. We've got App State taking on Wake Forest. USF Cincinnati. Oh, I also like PFW Changs over Bowling Green. I, just, I, I digress, but I do like <laughs> PFW Changs. I think, once again, you're getting the better team with points, and Bowling Green's ass. I mean... If you did, if you didn't see that Kent State game, well, you didn't miss anything. You just missed the team that's straight ass. I mean, it's like you can't beat Kent State in that game. You, you can't beat anybody, man. PFW Changs, the bit lives. <laughs> Threw me off. App State, Wake Forest, USF, Cincinnati, VCU, Villanova, and the other NCAA tournament game. Colorado, Boise State, probably game of the night. But, uh, Ron, what do you like here? Yeah, you know, that Colorado-Boise game, I think both teams should have been safely in to the tournament in the first round. I think it's a horrible draw for Florida. I think either of these teams could certainly take them down, especially with Florida's injury now. Um, I'm going to go with Colorado. You know, both teams had their issues in neutral site and road games, but Colorado showed up in the Pac-12 tournament. That's the difference. Boise State was a one-and-done in that Mountain West tournament. Lost by double digits. Colorado took down Utah, Washington State. I think they're in better form. I just think they are the better team slightly uh, in general. And you know, Colorado is the fifth best three-point shooting team. They don't take a ton of threes, but they are efficient there. And they score a lot of their points from two-point range. And Boise State's two-point defense ranked 250 at ninth in the country. I, I think they're in trouble there. So I'm going to go with Colorado at a reasonable price. Yeah, I'm going to go with Wake Forest here, playing the points against App State. I know App State... 27 win team you know the Sun Belt was really strong in spots this season and you know App State does have a win over Auburn earlier this season at home but I think Wake Forest at home is just too much I mean this is a Wake Forest team that's putting up points in bunches um you know we've been absolutely crushing teams at home for the better part of conference play and even in the non-conference portion of their schedule they were really really strong at home um go back to the beginning and they they beat up on uh beat up on Florida at home, they beat Rutgers, you know, they, and then you got into the conference portion of their schedule, you know, demolished teams like Virginia Tech, you know, Virginia, um, Louisville, okay, but Syracuse by 29, putting up 99 in that game, so I think uh, Wake Forest finds a way to get the win and cover at home, uh, laying six and a half, I'm going to take Wake. Mitch, what do you like? I think when you look at these last four games here, these are all teams that could have been in the NCAA tournament. You know, that certainly had their chance to get in. 
I thought Wake Forest, when they beat Pitt, that meant they were in. It's basically what they said, you know, is that, but what happened was that the five team bubble burst. I thought, you know, and they were like Oklahoma was the first one out and Rick Patino crying a river. I mean, it was Wake that got screwed. I mean, they, they beat the, that game, they said that game with Pitt was a playoff to get into the tournament and they beat the crap out of them. I'm with you on Wake. I, I think that, um, just a bad spot for App State, who you know, I think underachieved against in in the time when they needed it most. But I think App State did have that win in the regular season over Auburn, so uh, we know that they certainly yep. have the capability. But that game was home. Um, I think that I think that Cincinnati San Francisco is just one of those games that I'm going to stay about as far away as possible. It seems that Cincinnati, when I take them, um, they lose. When I don't take them. Um, they win. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just tapped out on Cincinnati games this season. With the last draw for me was the Oklahoma State game at home. Um, they lost outright in that one against Oklahoma State. That was it for me um, as far as Cincinnati. And I know Ron took him after that, and he got roasted on him also. Um, so it's like, just stay the hell away from the Cincinnati games. There's no reason. I think Wes Miller could be one of the more overrated coaches in, in college hoops right now. I mean, everybody wanted this guy. Everybody wanted him. And uh, they could have him for, for what I have to say. Man. They should have taken Pat Kelsey when they had the chance. I mean, that, that's, who they, that's who many thought was going to be the coach when they hired Wes Miller, and it wasn't. I think VCU also... Um, that, I like VCU with the points as well against Villanova. I think that that game's probably just tighter than that number. Both the, these are these are when you look at um, teams like at this level, when you say, "Oh, they could have been tournament teams and all that stuff," when you look at Villanova and VCU, they have something very, very, in co- very in common here. These are two of the best free throw shooting teams in the nation. Man, Villanova is the number one in free throw shooting, and I think. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I think I think VCU is top ten also. So both these teams um, absolutely can get it done. I think that's going to be a pretty good game. I think it's going to be a close one. And Jay, what do you like here? Hashtag, we coming. <laughs> Short, sweet, simple. I'm on Colorado today, man. I had to throw the hoodie on. Um, I agree with what a lot of what these guys both said. I think Boise and Colorado both should have probably been safely in. Um, boy, this is going to be a good game tonight. I'm with Roof, too. I think it's probably the best game on the night. I can't wait. Um, I'm on Colorado, man. I think they pull it off. I think they're favored in this game for good reason. I do think they're the better team. I think they win that game. I'm on the, the buffs in that one. And I'm going to take the Cincinnati. Is, I'm in all fairness, in all fairness, Boise got rung up, man. In, by New Mexico, they got yeah. rung up in that game, and so it's like that's why they're here. You know, they win that game, they're in. Man, New Mexico's out; they're in. they're all the way in. You know, and New Mexico's out, and Oklahoma Wake and those other guys are beating the crap out of each other for the other spot. But um, yeah, I mean, they, it's not like they didn't have their chance. And you look at their wins, right? Of this, they're so deserving. You know, they beat New Mexico in the regular season, but then Air Force, Wyoming, San Jose State, Fresno State, lost to Utah State, lost to Colorado State. So once again, it's that thing of beating all the teams that are out and beating none of the teams that are in. Yeah. Fair. Boise. I'm on, a, so I'm on Cincinnati. Boise quarterback, Vegas. I'm on Crap, Cincinnati. Casino Royale. I'm on Big 12 teams, man. It's going to be like their, what, their fifth straight home game, too. This game's in Cincinnati. Big 12 lost all their games yesterday, right? Yeah, but, you know, I wasn't really rocking with them teams yesterday. Uh, who was it? UCF. Kansas State. Kansas State. Kansas State. I, I, I faded both. I had Iowa and USF on the show yesterday. So I wasn't really rocking with neither one of them, too. Um, but today I'm, I'm, I'm taking Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati is the better basketball team. San Francisco, every time they get a chance to show the world that they're better than what they are, they never show up. They never show up. They never show up, bro. (laughs) They never do. When they play St. Mary's, they get smacked. When they play Gonzaga, they get smacked. 
And they finna play Cincinnati and get smacked. Um, I'm on the Bearcats in that one. All right. Move on to NBA. I'm going to head out. All right, Mitch, what do you got for sale today before you do? I have sports picks for sale. <laughs> um, tomorrow, NCAA tournament. Um, what more can you say? I, I didn't fill out a bracket for the contest. I think Costi set something up, though. There's a banner on the website, like right on Pick Dog's website. There's a banner. Just I'll put the link in the description. Yep. There's a, there's a contest. How many people entered? There's, there's like 60 or something there right now. Really? Yeah, we're at 60 brackets yeah. right now. I was about to put mine in before the show, so. What should the prize be? Great question. All right, you guys let me know. Yeah, well, we'll I'll that. announce it tomorrow on the show from Vegas, whatever the prize is going to be. But it'll be something good. It could be like cash or it could be um, like a package, you know, on the website. Like, I don't know. Or maybe since Costi did the contest, it could be his sharp trading plays for a week or some or a month. There you go. That's a nice, nice deal. All right. All well, right, I'll see good. you in a few hours, Jay. I'll see you in the airport. I'll uh, text you. When I'll you see get you in the airport in a little bit, my man. We'll be, we'll be we'll be we'll be lounging it. We'll be in the airport lounge, <laughs> table for two. <laughs> Mitch loves me so much, guys. He had to come see me before he goes to Vegas. <laughs> hey Jay, and at, at at the at the at the lounge, drinks are on me. Don't worry about it, man. You get as many as much. You can eat as much as you like. Drink as much as you like. Don't worry about it, man. Top shelf, no problem. I got you covered. You want a massage? You feel like taking a shower? Whatever you want to do. You just throw it all on my tab. They, they got it all covered for you. <laughs> Jeez. Michelle, man, I'll see you in a little bit, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm treading Jay to the Amex Lounge. Oh. <laughs> my wife's like, oh, big man over there. I said, yeah, I'm treating Jay to the Amex Lounge. She's like, oh. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys. To, I'll, see, I'll see you guys tomorrow from Jeez, Vegas. Jay, Jay gets the Amex Lounge. I get told I can't have anything top shelf. Only bar rail. And, and, and I didn't say that. Are you kidding? I I told Costi to bring me some money because we got a roof load of feed. So I told hey, him. hey, 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 that's true. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's preparing, man. He's been he's been he's been showing the videos, getting so, ready to he's getting ready to, to bench you. Before you go, someone <laughs> someone said the prize should be Costi's merce. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he said he was upgrading. So that could there be. There you surprise. go. Yeah, you get you get Costi's signed old Merce. <laughs> Game used. Game used Merce. <laughs> Game used. <laughs> it drives up the All right. already. All right. Thanks, Mitch. We'll see you later. I'll, I'll see you guys, and hopefully by the time I'm home, no more jackhammering, man. I think they got about five guys out there today, so they should finish. I just put the link in the in the comments section, fellas. So. Or and lady, so if you want to join the bracket contest, it's right there. And if you can't find it through the link, you should be able to just to go to CBS and type in pig dogs, and ours should pop up. It won't let me leave. Here, I got you. Kick me the hell out. <laughs> Jeez, I almost kicked. I almost kicked these guys out too. There we go. God, he keeps trying to join. Oh boy, I think Costi just found he just put in he just put the uh, the new the new prize in the in the uh, in the chat. <laughs> I think that's what we said was in his purse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that was that was poorly uh, poor. The situation was poorly misread by me. That's my fault. I'm trying to force uh I'm trying to force Costi's hand there. All right, well, let's get into the NBA. Got uh eight games. Yeah, Jay and I Jay and I were talking before the show. This is not um the best NBA card I think we've ever seen. But uh first game we got the uh the Heat paying a visit to the Cavaliers. Cavs laying two and a half at home. Total maybe the lowest that we've seen this season, or one of the lowest. Two oh three. 
Jay, what do you like here? I don't like this game. It's Cleveland or pass. Um, the injury report is ugly for Miami. I, and I now see at a bio game time decision as well. Kevin Love already out, Jovic out, Butler game time decision, Duncan Robinson out. We know Donovan Mitchell's already out for Cleveland. The thing is, I at least I've seen Cleveland play good basketball this season without Donovan Mitchell. Miami without Jimmy Butler and with this injury concerning is really a no bet for me. So it's Cleveland in Cleveland for me here in this one. Ron, what do you like here? Yeah, I agree. Same thing. Uh, it's, we've seen Cleveland compete without their stars and their you know, top players, but Miami, th- that last game against Philly was pretty ugly. They had some chances. You know, Philly basically gave them a few chances at the end of that game to tie it up and uh, some defensive lapses, but the Heat couldn't hit those shots. And I, I think their skill player, the, the, the lack of skill players are really going to show up in a game like this. So I'm going to go with uh, Cleveland. Oh, yeah, this one is bowling shoe ugly. I really want to take the under, but this might even be too low for me for a sexy pick. Um, even though I do think it's first to 100 wins this thing. Um, man. Yeah, I'm just going to take the under. Screw it. First to 100 wins this game, if we even get there. Um, this could this could easily be like 91-84 or something stupid like that. This is that bad. This could be like that. Who was it? Who was the head seven? Oh, it was the Knicks and the Sixers. What, 79 73? Yeah. 1994 basketball at its finest. Yes, sir. I can see that one being low on scoring. I can see it. Never mind. Changing. Over. <laughs> Plus, he's out here in Vegas. I don't want to get my butt kicked. Anyways. I didn't know Dana was in Vegas. I'm pretty sure he is. I'm pretty sure he is. Maybe I'm wrong. But, no, he's normally good for those. Those, those, uh, I think it's the public betting thing he's doing on YouTube. Those have been pretty good. People have been hitting on Speaking those. of Vegas, I need to text my local. Tell him I'm going to be there. Yeah, have you talked to him? <laughs> oh, <laughs> He um he said he was he he told we were talking he said he was gonna try to link up but I think he's been busy this whole week so for sure yeah got uh yeah, the, <laughs> got the uh, the Pacers paying a visit to the Pistons Pacers laying nine and a half on the road total two thirty five Ron what do you like here I'm gonna go with the Pacers um, again not my favorite game but you know we see. Detroit loses a three straight down after they were starting to play a little better basketball against some weak teams. But I think this is a good spot for the Pacers, who have not been great on the road, but it's a good spot for them to get a blowout win. They've pretty much dominated this season series so far, two double-digit wins by 14 and 23. The other game that was closer was still an eight-point win, uh, and I think that was a game where uh, Halliburton played. But um, still, I think in the end it's good enough here to uh, get the job done by double digits. Yeah, I'm going to take the Pacers as well here. Like Ron said, it's just been it's just been dominance from Indiana in the regular season series. Uh, they just keep finding ways to get covers. I mean, the first meeting in Indiana was a comfortable victory. Um, laying nine and a half, they won by 23. Then they got the cover in Detroit, laying seven and a half, won by eight. Then won by 14 at home, um, just under a month ago. So give me the uh, the Pacers here. I know Detroit's been able to provide some value in some spots, but. I think just Indiana, I think, has their number. So give me the Pacers. Jay, what do you like here? I like um, the Pacers. Like y'all said, they've dominated the season series. Pistons, you can make money betting them in certain spots, but their injury report is kind of concerning today. I just see this as a bounce back spot for Indiana, who's lost two of their last three. This is a very winnable game for them. I think they're just going to be too much for Detroit, kind of like Boston was, and they just run them out of the gym. So I'll lay the points here with Indiana. All right, moving on. Got the – oh, boy, this this game's been a mess. Got the Celtics weighing 10.5 at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. Total set at 224. With this line where it is, I'm assuming Giannis isn't playing. 
Yes, he's listed it out now. He's out. Because I was seeing questionable on one site, but now, like I said, now with the line set at ten and a half, it's got. Nah, he's official. So yeah, he's official. I hate doing this, uh, especially with the Bucks on the other side, because Damian Lillard is, from what I'm seeing, still slated to go, and we've seen him be able to put this team on his back and and will them to a win, but not with the Celtics on the other side. I hate backing the Celtics for a lot of the spots. I know they've been really good against the spread this season. And, you know, maybe that's making me sound like a hater. It's just like, sometimes I just feel like, sometimes I feel like it's too much. Like there should be spots where they should fall, but they keep finding ways. Um, do I love laying 10 and a half here? No, but I think it's the only way for me to go in this one. So I'm going to take the Celtics. Jay, what do you like here? I like taking the Celtics when, when they're motivated to do something. Um, when there's a reason for them to put belt to ass and um, there's a reason for them to put belt to ass in this one tonight. Um, first off, this is a revenge game. The last time these two teams met Milwaukee put belt to ass, but beat them 135, 102. Um, so it's a revenge game at home at the crib. Celtics have been balling too. Like when you just look at it, they've been airing everybody out. Their last five wins are all, <laughs> putting belt to ass so it's like i've been saying for a month now unless you have a clear and concise reason to fade boston i think they're the best team in the league i've said that all season i know they've lost to denver twice if you got denver as your number one i definitely understand i think those are the two best teams in the nba but i'm saying all that to say even when milwaukee's at full strength i don't know if they're going to be enough to compete with boston when it comes down to it so no Giannis today motivation here for Boston to get them back for what they did to them last time. I'm on the uh I'm on the Celtics here. I just I think they win this game by double digits easily. Ron, what do you like here? Yep, exactly what Jay said basically. I like the Celtics here. Uh they're 31 and 3 straight up at home this season. So, you know, to Chris's point, when you see those types of records, you, you're going to have spots where they're overvalued. This is plain and simple. People are going to overreact to the record, and the prices are going to be inflated. However, when you got a team like Milwaukee, even though you know Giannis is not playing, he didn't play in the last game, and they beat up on the Suns. And I think people, you know, are going to see that and say, "Wow, you're getting the Bucks ten, pl- t- you know, ten plus points in this game." That game against Phoenix, Milwaukee just could not miss from the perimeter, and it was crazy. It was like guys like Bobby Portis. It wasn't like, you know, it, you know. It, He's going to have some moments, but for them to shoot 65% again in a, in a first half from three, I just don't see it, especially in the garden and against a tough defensive team. I think the Celtics win this game in a blowout. All right, move on. Got the Sacramento Kings laying 11 now against the Toronto Crafters. Jay, what do you like in this one? I'm hoping today's the day that you finally do it because you haven't done it all season. Like I, I haven't heard you say these words, but I know they're on the do not bet list. Mitch is gone, so I can't ask him to see the list. But we know the Raptors have been on the do not bet list for, for most of the season. But we also know of a new spot that's one of our favorite spots here at Pig Dogs, and that's just simply fading the Kings as sizable favorites. Like They just don't cover as sizable favorites. They just don't do it. Especially not double digits, man. This is going to be a four to five point win for the Kings if they even win it. Toronto may get them outright. Toronto may get them outright. Um, it's just a weird game, you know. I, I I hate to do it, but I gotta bet the Raptors today. I gotta bet the Raptors here. Ron, what do you like? Yeah, I agree. I gotta go with the Raptors. It's just a good spot for them, you know. We see them at the bottom of the bottom now. They're on a Big losing streak, catching a ton of points at home. This is the spot you want to be in against the spread. This is where you can get the most value. So I'll take the points with Toronto. It's not a pretty dog, but I think it gets the job done. Sam. Roof, are you doing it? Are you taking the Raptors? You never do it. Are you taking your team? It's today the day. Jay, you know I love you. But you better put those Cartier sunglasses on because you have to be drunk off your ass if you think <laughs> – I'm taking the Toronto Raptors. I know this is a buy low spot. I know this is a buy low spot for, for, for the Raptors. I get it. And I'm I understand where you guys are coming from with that. 
But the Toronto Raptors are a dumpster fire. They that are. is not being extinguished anytime soon. Look, I get it. We've 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 made plenty of money fading the Kings as as a favorite at home. I'm not disputing that. I've been on the other side of it. I we've we've made we've made money hand over fist with it. But the Kings have also covered six in a row as road favorites against the East. And what have we seen them do consistently this season is do it against the bad teams. I mean, look look at look at the teams that they played lately in this position, right? The most recent one they beat 11, or excuse me, they they beat Indiana by 11. Against Charlotte, they beat them by 25. Against Detroit, they beat them by 21. This Raptors team missing Hurdle and, Bar- and Barnes indefinitely. Emmanuel quickly is now out. RJ Barrett still in, still dealing with that personal matter. Right now, you're relying on guys like Grady Dick to not do a jersey swap. Um, you've got <laughs> Kelly Olynyk, <laughs> Ochean Bocci. Have you seen the list of guys that they said that he shouldn't be able to do jersey swaps with? Yeah. Monsieur <laughs> Little. Who, who are the other ones? <laughs> like Bruce. No, I'm just like Bruce, not Bruce Brown. Derek White. Like, Derek White. Um, yeah, there you go. Derek White. <laughs> um. I'm sorry, they threw great, they threw uh Josh Giddy on the list just to be funny. <laughs> um <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, there's it's uh there's a couple out there that are that are quite funny. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, no, I, I can't. I, I I get where you guys are coming from and I understand it and I understand the angle and going against it, but it's just like the Kings are pretty much at full strength. The only guy they're missing right now that's been a consistent part of that lineup right now has been Kevin Herter. He's dealing with a shoulder issue, but Still got De'Aaron Fox, you know, Demodis Sabonis. I think Demodis Sabonis is going to have like a 2020 triple double tonight. I honestly do, because there's nobody inside to stop him. So, yeah, I'm taking I'm taking the Kings here. I I'm I'm so done with the Toronto Raptors. That's one thing I can at least say, and pe- people can't bash me for, is that Jay likes his home teams. Ron Ron sticks with the Islanders, and I get it. I stick with the Leafs when I can, but when I when I, I'm going to call a spade a spade. When the Raptors are trash, they're trash. And Listen, if you need overtime to beat the Grizzlies, then you're going to have a tough time covering 12, 11 and but a half. But if, if you also get the game. cover against the Grizzlies in overtime. Depending on the number. Depending on the number. Depending on. And 11 was available throughout the day. So as I said, depending on the number. Some people cashed, some people didn't. So Closing I, line, you did not cover. Yeah, closing – well, closing line you didn't cover. I didn't cover because I had nine and a half. That was my play of the day at the Grizzlies uh, the other day. And oh, I had – yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. So if you're taking the Grizzlies, you're taking the Raptors. Come on. Yeah, come no, on, man. You're taking no, the no, Grizzlies. You're taking the Raptors. Hold on. We'll What's get, the we'll, difference? Okay, hold on. We'll get, we'll get to the Grizzlies yeah, in a awesome. minute. We'll get to the Grizzlies <laughs> in a minute. Got the Thunder <laughs> taking on the Jazz. Thunder up to 15 and a half now. Oh, boy. Ron, what do you like here? I think the line should be about 27. I think this is a horrible spot for the Jazz. And OKC, they haven't been the best cover team in the second half of the season. They still are one of the best cover teams overall, though. And they are known to put on the route against weak teams in the NBA. We've seen it plenty of times. We've seen some of the most lopsided scores in the last decade come from this Oklahoma City team this season. So I think we see another one here. Yeah, I think I have to lean towards the Thunder as well. As much as I like the Utah Jazz and spots, it's just like as talented as this team can be and as good as the players are on there, what we've seen when when they they struggle on the road at the best of times, but we've seen them extremely struggle when Markkanen and Clarkson are out like they are here. Um, the Thunder are once again clean, you know, from an injury perspective. Um, we, the, for me, I, I keep saying this whenever I talk about the Thunder. The knock on the Thunder over the years when they weren't the team that they are now was always, well, imagine what this team will do when they stay healthy. And now they're healthy. Now it's their time. So I'm with the, I, I'm with Ron. I'm taking the Thunder here. Jay, we sweeping it? Of course. Um, of course. Ron told one side of the story. Um, we've seen the Thunder – completely demolished teams all season. There's a there's a second half to this story as well. We've seen the Jazz be aired the fuck out <laughs> plenty of times this year too. Um 
I honestly, I, I need to go check this. I think the Jazz have lost by double digits on the road this season more times than they've lost by single digits on the road this season. Um, the Jazz you, get you, aired you out keep, on the keep, road. You keep, you keep talking. I'll check. They get aired out all the time on the road. It's true. Like, you don't even need to check. It's, it's, <laughs> is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, this one is – and like Ron said, the Thunder Buddies haven't been the best cover team recently. They they haven't. But I think this is a spot at home. They're going to be up 20 at half. I might even try to look at an extended in this one, man. Like, <laughs> I think this is just one of them spots where the Thunder get down on the team. Their head and shoulders better than. So, I'm on the Thunder Buddies for life in this one. I got the number for you. So the Jazz, they're 9-24 and overall on the road this season. Of those 24 losses, six have been by single digits. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. 18 have been out. by double digits. 18 by double. Oh, my God. I get aired out, bro. Oh. <laughs> I get aired out. Ooh. I get aired out. And the Jazz coming off the win last game in the season series, so. Yeah. And it's a it's revenge game for the Thunder too. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah. We've got we got Markinen out with a quad injury. Clarkson out with a groin. We got John Collins out with collapsed butt cheeks and a concussion. Yeah. <laughs> a broken neck, broken, broken spirit, neck. broken yeah. heart. Yeah, yeah. Con, con, yeah, no neck syndrome. <laughs> Oh man, Anthony Edwards damn near baptized him, man. That was disgusting. Oh my god. I sent Jay that or I, I think I, I tweeted it and I asked Jay if he had seen the dunk. I met and then I just got an oh my god. <laughs> it yeah, was, man, that was Well and then Austin Reeves got it. First play of the game, like the next game after. Yeah. Reeves it's got all, body too. It's just it's just that Austin Reeves could at least answer the question where um, Anthony Edwards was hilarious, though. The funniest thing about it to me, though, so after, you know, he did the little interview, he was going to the thing, he was signing things, and one of the yeah. kids asked him for the jersey. <laughs> He's like, no, I got to give it to Collins. No, I have to give the jersey to John Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that was actually, like, nice, or is that, like, a troll job? <laughs> That's a troll job, man. But when you did it, when you did somebody like that, you can talk as crazy as you want, man. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna move on to let's see here. Let me just sorry, let me get this up here. Got the Grizzlies taking on the Warriors. Grizzlies catching what, eleven here? Eleven and a half, I see 11 now. Eleven and a half. I'm gonna take the Grizzlies here. Um you love. You love you some Memphis Hustle. I didn't before, but then I found found an angle that I, that I keep going back to, and it's been pretty good. In their last 12 games, a road dog of at least nine points. They're 10-2 and two against the spread. When you look at that closing line from that game against, uh, against the Kings, they covered it. Like I said, they didn't cover the line I got, but they covered the closing line. And the way I look at it is I'm starting to see it a lot more with the Grizzlies. Is you have guys that are playing for contracts. There are guys that are that are not necessarily, you know, like teams like the Hornets and the Pistons that have their lineups pretty much set. They're just uh, they're just struggling. But the Grizzlies have had to turn to the to the hustle for how many like how many like we've seen how long this injury list has been for how many games. You have guys that are were expected to be G leaguers for at least a couple of years that are already now getting a chance to prove themselves at an NBA level. Like I said, they're playing for contracts. They're playing to get you know. You know, get their get themselves out there, get themselves exposure. Maybe they get picked up by another team, and we're seeing that fight. As Gigi Jackson's the main guy that stands out to me for a guy that's that's used his opportunity and taken advantage of it. So, I think that you know the Grizzlies. I think they show up here. I'm not saying they win the game outright. They may lose this one by eight or nine points, but I think they can. Uh, I think they can keep it within eleven and a half against the uh, the Warriors. Who for me, I think they just have bigger fish to fry. I think uh, I think they just want to. You know, get the win, move on. They got a home date against the Pacers coming up before heading out on the road. Um, and this is a Warriors team that's lost five of their last eight games. They, they lost at home to the Spurs. They just got crushed by the Knicks and a wire-to-wire -wire win for the Knicks. So give me the Grizzlies and the points. Jay, what do you like here? 
I'm probably not gonna bet this thing, fellas. But if I were to, I hate this time. I kind of, I kind of hate this time of year because I, I kind of fall into this trap sometimes. But it's like do or die for, <laughs> for the Golden State Warriors. They don't have time to keep assing around, especially not with the how high Houston is. Houston finna go get the Warriors or the Lakers for that final playing spot. So. With them being losers of five of their last eight, they need to get their shit together. And in, for me, there's no better spot than to get your shit together than at home at the crib against the Grizzlies. Um, before you get ready to go on this, like you said, next game up against the Pacers and this road trip. We saw them air them out last time back in February, 121-101 back in Memphis. I don't like betting Memphis on the road. I just don't. Um, I just don't. I got to take Golden State here. Am I overly enthused with laying double digits with the eighth place Warriors, the 50-50 Warriors? Not really. But is there an avenue where they flip the switch, have the magnets activated, and Curry, Clay, and company get busy tonight? I think so as well. So I'm going to lean towards Golden State here. Ron, what do you like here? I'm going to keep it short. Because both you guys probably talked about five minutes each in this game. Hey, I'm gonna, easy. <laughs> on a Warriors Grizzlies game, I think there's better time to you know put into this show. No, I'm kidding. I'm gonna take the Warriors though. I, I've, I've been fading the Grizzlies for quite a while, and uh, I just think that while they're fighting for contracts, the Warriors are fighting for the playoffs, and I think it's a little bit more important. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with the Warriors. Sure enough, Ron always knows how to demolish me. <laughs> Demolish, but <laughs> demoralize me. <laughs> All right, we've got the uh, the Suns taking on the Sixers. Suns lay in nine, uh, total set 222.5. Uh, Jay, what do you like here? I know I don't want to lay nine and a half with the Suns. I know that for sure. So that automatically puts me on a lean towards Philadelphia. It's really just that simple. The Suns are – one of the worst ATS teams in basketball. They're one of the most overrated teams in basketball. Is this finally the spot where they get some get their shit together and get something done here? Maybe. But even if I think that is the spot for them, does that mean go lay double digits? No, it doesn't. They're the third worst ATS team in basketball. Um, they're entering Atlanta Hawk territory. <laughs> they're only three games better than the Hawks ATS. <laughs> so... Take that for what you want. I'm on Philadelphia. Listen, it might be they might be approaching the Hawk territory in terms of ATS, but we know what today is. It's Wednesday, and it's Romanelli Hawk Wednesdays, and they're not playing today, right? So uh, you know we got to throw a team in there, and it's the Phoenix Suns. Here in the Phoenix Suns, I think there's a great spot for them to bounce back. They lost to Milwaukee, but like I said, Milwaukee just could not miss in that game. They shot 59% from the three-point line. The Suns' defense may be, you know, struggling against a three, but it ain't going to be that bad, from, especially against the Sixers team that's shorthanded right now. And, uh, you know, I was on Philly in that game against Miami, but I got to admit, I didn't like what I saw from the Sixers in that game. I think it was more that he just couldn't make those, you know, wide-open shots, especially late. And uh, I, I, think the, I think the Sixers are in trouble here. I think they're in trouble. I think the Suns win this game pretty handily. Yeah, I'm probably just going to stick with the under here. I don't trust either one of these teams. I, I lean towards the Suns um, just because like I said the Sixers are falling out of favor fast. Um, but, yeah, it's hard, it's hard for me to get on board with the uh, with the Phoenix Suns at this kind of number, especially laying points on the road. So give me the, uh, give me the under in this one. Tyrese Maxey, he's he's a, he's a stud, and he's gonna be he's gonna be a key piece for that team for the future. But yeah, I, I just can't get there. Um, last game for the NBA, we got the Clippers taking on the Blazers. Clippers laying twelve on the road. Ron, what do you like in this one? I noticed I'm laying a lot of lumber today. Uh, Pacers, Celtics, no. Suns, no. Thunder. No. 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 no, 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 don't tell me you're gonna do that. No, do it. <laughs> no. I was just realizing you know you look at the, the trend I'm in Suns right uh, Warriors it's another one but I'm not I'm not laying it with the Kings and I'm not laying it with the Clippers give me the Blazers Ooh. plus the points I, I love me some ugly dogs and this is one of them uh, Blazers are in horrible form they've been in horrible form Ooh. since the beginning of the season there's nothing new there but the Clippers have lost four of the last five games 
and are not in much better form themselves. So there's no way I can lay this many points with the most overrated team in the NBA. I'm almost going to say college basketball. NBA, that would be Kentucky, of course, but give me the Blazers. There you go. All right. The world's better place. <laughs> Roof, you must be finna do it. I see the look on your face. Oh, no, man. no, I'm sticking to my namesake here. I am taking a roof on this piece of gar- this piece of garbage. Uh, okay, fair. Just because I just because it's it's like it's the clip. I, I gave out the Clippers in the video, um, because I was like, because I think the line had just come out at eleven and a half, um, and I was like, you know what? Because I, I can't I can't give out a roof low on a video, so I was like, whatever. I'll give out the Clippers because. I trust their offense a lot more than I do the clip, the, the Blazers and, you know, PG, Kawhi, James Harden, none of them are showing up on the injury report, but realistically, it's probably a lean towards the Clippers, if anything. But I know what Jay's going to say. He's already tipped his hand, so Jay, respectfully, fuck the Clippers. <laughs> I love how Mitch had no idea. I love how Mitch had no idea what respectfully meant, because he actually thought you were saying, like, respectfully. <laughs> Hey man, it's that simple, bro. We've been we've been red hot coming out of the break, just fading the Clippers. Like <laughs> it's been it's been really profitable. We cashed on the money line with the Hawks last game. This is what I say, man. If you are a parlay better out there, you love your plus money parlays. You might as well just play Blazers money line plus five fifty tonight. <laughs> That's your parlay for the night, and you only got to sweat one game. <laughs> he only got to stay away one game. There's a legitimate chance the Blazers beat the Clippers outright tonight. The Clippers can't be trusted. They're a sharp falling knife right now. And we're just going to continue to fade them. It's really not even that complicated. I wish my flight was landing sooner or I would be at the book and I would place this myself. But I'm probably not going to have time. Do you want me to go place it for you? I might text you here in a second. I mean, I might need you to put me a put me a ticket in for sure. <laughs> Keep in mind, I don't have Jay Briggs money. Okay, just 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 just, just 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 keep that in mind. Okay, I, I only brought a certain amount with me, and chill. I got you. Nothing crazy. Nothing. <laughs> just keep it under like five hundred bucks. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Didn't divide that by about five. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, what do you guys got for sale today, Jay? What do you got for sale? I got my NBA play of the day, man. I've dropped back to back. Um, I don't like that. But what I will say is every time – I've only dropped back to back plays on the NBA play of the day four times this season. I've only dropped back to back four times. Every time I've dropped back-to-back all four times, that third one, I've hit. So, I have my NBA play of the day today, man. I've hit 10 of my last 15 on that NBA play of the day. Um, Looking to bounce back. And the last two, they were frustrating. I had the Jazz. They were in it. They were in it. Last night, I had the Nuggets. They had it. (laughs) They had it. (laughs) Fell apart. So, I feel like I'm still seeing the board extremely well. We'll bounce back on that NBA play of the day today. And then um, I'll most likely have a three-pack in the NBA for today. Maybe one college hoops play. But the madness starts tomorrow, man. It's the best time of the year to hop on some long term. Hop on a week. Uh, I'm being Vegas for the week, man, looking to kick the crap out of the books. So if you think I am, join on with me so you can do exactly the same. But Ron, what do you got uh, for sale today? I got to say, Jay, it's really impressive. I didn't realize you haven't lost three in a row in the play of the day all season. That's that's crazy, you know, because when you do a season long from since November, it's just statistically likely you're going to lose three, maybe four, maybe even five, you know. But it just goes to show you're locked in. I've been pretty good in the NBA, too, this season. I'm up a, over 1,000 units. So got an NBA. I got three plays in the NBA, two of them in the three-pack. I also got my college basketball bank shot best bet, my top play in college hoops. Hit it last yesterday with Iowa. Looking to do the same here. It's not one of the tournament games, but the NCAA tournament games. But you know, I love my small schools and small tournaments, the CIT, NIT games. So that's where it's coming from. Yeah, for me today, I got uh, I got a couple things on the board. Got a NCAA tournament play of the day. Got say a nineteen dollar play of the day from the uh, the NIT. 
Got that as part of my college hoops three-point play as well. And uh, got an NBA play of the day as well. Um, Trash Pandas got me yesterday. They had it too, man. They had it, and then they just... <laughs> they had it maybe twice in the game. Like, they were in they were in the cover zone twice, which, to me, reinstates Trash Panda status because you should be right. able to air out the Spurs. I get it. Spurs have been playing well, but what they did all season, combined with the fact of how good they were as a road favorite. Yeah. I know. Ron, I had the magic you got your, you got circled. Got this, that, that's... That's the point today is stick with your gut because I had the magic circled and I switched it to the Mavs. God damn it. Anyway, sorry, Jay, I cut you off. And now you go, you good. Ron, what's the name of your cat? Your friend right there. Oh, her name is Emmy. Emmy, man. Okay, okay, okay. Welcome she's to the show, Emmy. <laughs> yeah, she's almost knocked down the vase of flowers. She's almost took down the camera today, so she's... She's been an earthquake so far. <laughs> it's one of the uh, 16 teams on the college, or no, 24 teams on the college hoops card. That's all I'm going <laughs> to say. All right. We've got the NHL. I don't know what Jay's going to do today, man. There, It's like. It's tough. Because it's you've, tough. Got, you've got the hype train in action. You've got. Jay's hometown team against one of his favorite bits of the season. Yeah. And you got the Kings and the Smudges. The Kings and the Smudges. Jay, what are you uh what are you on today? I want to take the hype train, but I feel like that's the trap game of the night. It, the line yells trap to me. 135. Ugh, and the line just yells trap. So I'm gonna leave that one alone. TNT game. And leave it alone. Of course, it seems like every time there's a really good game that I really, really want to attend, I'm leaving town. So the Thunder and the Mavs, when they played, I was in Denver. The Coyotes are in town tonight. I'm leaving, though. I'm going to um, – I'll be in Vegas. Earlier this season – in baseball, the Blue Jays were in town, I think – I was out of town then, too. So it just seems like I always miss the teams I really want to see. Um, I'm going to miss the Coyotes in town tonight. I really would have went to this game. I promise you I would. I'm taking the Coyotes tonight, money line just for the bit, man. I am. Roof, I don't want to hear the car sound. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's coming. Hey, my stars, we, we playing okay right now. You know, we had that little hiccup. You know, we've won three of our last five. But the Coyotes, they kind of heated back up. They won three of their last five coming off two straight wins. At this style plus money price, y'all know I love playing the Coyotes at this plus money price. I've done it all season. The, the meeting that we saw these two teams play earlier this season, Coyotes did compete. It was way back in November. The game did go to overtime, though. I'm going to take uh, I'm gonna take Arizona, Roof, and I'm going to take them. I'm just going to take a money line. I don't even want the points. I'm just going to take a money line. Or the puck line. I'm sorry. I'm talking about points. I don't want the puck line. Not line. Money line. <laughs> Where is it? Someone's asking this. It's going to be up after the show. It was a late morning. It was a late start to the morning for me. So it'll be up after the show. It's only three games. But we'll get, we'll get it out there. Ron, what do you like here on the, uh, the NHL card? I give up. I'm going to Capitals. They're, they're going to make the playoffs. We're not. Islanders are done. Um, they don't even look like a team. They're just horrible. And Capitals, I took my cap in them. They, they've earned it. Team a lot of people thought was sellers because of how old they got. And, you know, Kuznetsov, Ovechkin had a slow start to the year. And uh, here they are. You know, they're, they're in great shape. They're in great form. And uh, I think they continue to win. And they're getting plus money. So I'll take it. And the Maple, looked, Maple Laps looked horrible yesterday. So I might as well fade them again. Yeah. The Make Me Laps? Yeah. Um. Trey, I'm gonna just tell you right now. I'm 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 really high up at my hotel, but I can still hear it. <laughs> the coyote getting ran one. over tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that, co- that coyote is a damn pancake on on the interstate. Okay, it is like it's melted into the concrete at this point. 
yeah, they won back-to-back games. Cool, you want a cookie? That, that's all well and good. Probably had more two-game win streaks than I've had this season. But anyways, that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> I'm just so done with the Coyotes. Um, I, I get it. The plus money is nice. And the, the Stars, I mean, these guys are NHL players. You, you know, they're, they, they're proud. It's, it's, they're, they're not just going to roll over, but we've seen the Coyotes get trampled in spots. And the Stars have owned this matchup in the past um, head-to-head between the two. I think they've won six straight. An 8 of 10? I could be wrong on that one. Let me verify here. 5 straight and 8 of 10. Um, before that overtime win this season, the previous four had all been decided on the puck line. Um, give me the stars here. Stars puck line for me. Uh, I know I'm just going to randomly throw it out there, but we saw the Dodgers win this morning. Do either of you guys have anything for tomorrow morning's game? It's, it's Musgrove for the Padres. And Yoshinobu Yamamoto for the uh, the Dodgers. Yamamoto. <laughs> Nothing crazy official or anything. I, I would lean towards the over. Um, I didn't like. I honestly maybe I would lean towards the Padres a little bit as well. Yamamoto really struggled in spring. Musgrove. I watched his first outing. I think he was more. He struggled, but I think it was more of a, he was experimenting with different pitches. So I'm not sure if that's going to be the case in the regular season. So I would lean towards the over in the Padres because you get a nice price coming off the loss. So uh, that's what I'm leaning. Me, I'm still technically on my fade the Padres train until they give me a reason not to. <laughs> um, I'm not – this is not an official player or nothing. Like I'm probably not jumping deep into baseball unless I love it. I just run line. I know. I hate to be that guy. But <laughs> I just run line. I love fading the Padres. I mean, it makes sense. Um, it, it, it looked like it wasn't going to make sense earlier today. But um, see, here's the thing for me. It's like Musgrove's the more known commodity to, in the MLB circles. So we've kind of seen what he's had. Um, against the Dodgers, let's see, what was he against the Dodgers last season? Oh, geez. Oh, in his career, he's 0-7 with an ERA under four against the Dodgers. Um, last year, 0-1 with a 3.38 ERA across two starts. Give me the Dodgers run line. Why not? Yamamoto was legit. I know making the transition from the, uh, from the Japanese league to the MLB is sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, we saw it with Kenta Maeda when he first came over; he was really good. Um, and I think until teams start to figure out Yamamoto, I think the the level of uh, the unknown, the anonymity is going to play well for him here. So, give me a uh, give me give me the Dodgers run line in that one. Give me a give me a Hassan Kim home run over there too. He's been going crazy. He might get another one. Shit. <laughs> I can see him getting one off Yamamoto. I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. right now, Yamamoto's fastball is really hittable, so I worry about that. Uh, yeah. And, he, you know, he struggled quite a bit in spring. But so is Musco. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, give me, yeah, you know, give me the chalk. Give me Otani for a home run. Why not? Give me the sentimental value. All right. You know what time it is. Pale, pale, pale. Jay, what do you got for today? All right. Let's go with hashtag we coming. I'm taking Colorado, NCAA tournament action. Um, Give me the Boston Celtics to kick the crap out of Milwaukee at home, ESPN game. I'll do it for Mitch. They're gonna be doing this up the sidelines and shit tonight. Give me the uh, give me the Celtics, and give me the Blazers plus the points. Fading the Clippers like we always do. Three teamer. Let's do it. Ron, what do you got? I'm gonna go with the lumberjack parlay, laying the lumber with the Pacers, the Thunder, and. Colorado and college hoops. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit crazy here. I'm feeling confident being in Vegas. Let's do this. We'll go five-teamer. Pacers, Celtics. Uh, sorry, Pacers, Celtics, Thunder, UNLV, and Loyola. Five-teamer. Okay, Jay, that's a little bit... Okay, pause. <laughs> hey, so I'm, I'm going to post the link in the comments again. I'll post the link in the full show comments for the uh, bracket challenge. We already got like 60 or so people in there. Um, I think y'all should join. It's going to be fun um, just to see who can come out on top. Um, mine's already done, so should be a lot of fun. Y'all guys can join us. We'll, we'll list... We'll talk about prizes probably tomorrow. We'll get together, figure out what it's going to be. It's probably going to be something nice. We're going to talk Mitchell to it. So um, <laughs> make sure y'all uh, have fun and join us in that. Um, for me, the jam session the next couple of days, we got to play by ear. I'm for sure posting it. I'm not sure what my timing is going to look like being in Vegas. It's going to be posted, though, so don't kill me. Um, yeah, that's all I got for y'all boys today. Ron, you got anything yeah. to leave everybody with? Yeah, well, uh, tonight my bank shop breakdown will go up for tomorrow's first round games. And I also have a couple of shorts we're going to be posting today at some point. I go over three teams I like to win the national championship and three potential first round upsets that I'm looking at. So uh, those will be out shortly. I like that. And for me, the wraparound will be out in a few minutes. Let's just say. <sighs> my ass was slow getting out of bed today to the point that I had leftover wing stop for breakfast because I was too lazy to go downstairs. I'm at Vegas time. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Unpopular opinion. Wing stop. Eh. Can live with it. Can, can live without it. Maybe I just got the wrong order, but. Fair. Yeah. I just, well, this I, is what I, happens when you get chain restaurants in Vegas. You got to. Get some of the places you can't get anywhere else. Well, unless you can't, you don't get that in Canada. Well, we just we just got our first wing stop location. That's about forty five minutes from huh. me, and I think it just oh, okay. opened as I was away. But it was my first time trying wing stop. I'm like, you know, it's not bad, but it's not. Uh... Oh, so that was your first time ever having wing stop. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, first time ever having wing stop. And they shorted me on the hot honey. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get some hot honey while I'm there. I might have to. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. There's actually not a lot of hot honey walking around the strip. Anyways, um, <laughs> walking through the MGM. Ron, Ron just gave me the the shake, the head shake of disapproval. So on that note, <laughs> we're gonna head out. We will. Uh, we will see you guys bright and early tomorrow. I think Mitch will be able to host it tomorrow. I don't know. Our, I don't even know. We might be doing this in person tomorrow. I don't know what the story is with that. So. Uh we'll see i'm fine with just doing it as we've been doing it because then i just got to roll out of bed i don't got to worry about getting in the makeup chair or whatever um <laughs> let's address this quickly before we head off because some people may not know when you get the membership we get all of your picks if you get a long-term pass you get every single play that we make unless it's a season pass for a specific sport like some cappers have some cappers have it not the youtube membership though not the youtube not membership. the youtube membership no sorry yeah good point jay yeah not the youtube membership when you sign up for a long-term pass at Pick Dogs, unless it's a single sport, you get every single play that we give out. Um, I know go. some cappers have like, like I have a hockey pass where you just get strictly hockey. Some have NCAA tournament passes. Um, but if you get a three-day, seven-day, monthly, or yearly, you get all the plays we make. Um, yeah, I think that's the... Uh, best way i can describe it but but yeah the youtube membership um is just just uh like the benefits and like the chat and stuff like that but all righty see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning appreciate it and uh let's cash some tickets today peace